Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to have a look at this resource monitor that is a flat pack available on any distribution, of course, running flat packs. And you can install it from the AUR on Arch and a few other places as well. And what it seeks to do is to be a better resource manager than those that you find inside of your uh, main system distributions with a lot more tabs, bringing a more modern view to it. Uh, that being said, there are a couple little bugs with it, which we will have a look at here in a minute. We're recording uh, this first part of this video on my Linux Mint laptop. I wanted to install this on real hardware without uh, installing it on my main streaming system. And so I thought this would be the best computer because it's a bigger system. And I think the problem might be with Ryzen processors. We'll get into what that is here in just a moment. So Linux Mint out of the box has this system monitor where we can have a look at the various processes. We can see the resources, which is in this case, it's showing us all of the CPUs on this. This is a Ryzen, it's a Ryzen 5 59U maybe, 5900U I think, I forget. Uh, let's see if the about system tells us. Tells us exactly which processor we have in this one. I, I forget all the processors. There you go. Uh, 30, uh, 35, um, 3450U, excuse me, uh, with Radeon Vega mobile graphics. Uh, so we have, um, uh, we have 16 gigs of memory, system memory installed, and the integrated graphics is utilizing 2 gigabytes of that. I believe I have that set in the BIOS. So you can see which versions of everything we have. We can see what all the CPU looks like, we can see what all the memory looks like, and we can see the network history. Here's our file systems, we can see um, uh, everything going on here. Here's our boot EFI, here's our boot, here's our, our main system there, and you can see what how much space we have. Uh, you can see this boot sector is getting kind of full, that's what happened when the uh, the old Linux kernels did not uh, get deleted in that one video. I talked about how to fix a system if your uh, main boot sector gets overfilled and this whole system fails to, to uh, boot. But you can see this one here does, it's not the most, uh, the most useful tool out there. Of course, we can always run HTOP, which I've installed HTOP onto here earlier. So we can see here's our processes uh, over here, our, our eight CPU cores. We can see what's going on, our memory, and stuff like this. So of course, the terminal-based system uh, is um, uh, it's usable, uh, particularly for a person that wants a terminal-based uh, application. That works as well. But the new system, what it's going to do is give us a lot more modern of an approach. So it's simply called resources is how you're going to get it installed. Now, this is the bug. You'll see the applications and the processes here are blank. Um, this is uh, somebody asked about this over in the, uh, the uh, issues section. Applications and processes tabs are blank. And initially the developer, the developer recognizes it as a bug, uh, looking into it. And you'll see this person is also using an AMD Ryzen. Now my main streaming system is also an AMD Ryzen and at least using a virtual machine, it does show us everything in there. So at the end of this video, we're going to go ahead and go to that system and show you this, the uh, application inside of a virtual machine where everything is working. So maybe it's related to the Ryzen in processor. Uh, here he says uh, VM only change system being GNOME instead of Plasma. The app does work correctly. So this guy, uh, his main system is running Plasma. He's getting the same bug I'm getting. I'm running Cinnamon. Um, and I know that uh, on my other computer with the same operating systems being Cinnamon, it's going to work. Now I'm wondering if it could be related to uh, GTK4. Um, because the version of Cinnamon in my virtual box is certainly newer than the one uh, in, in my main computer here. So the VM is, uh, if it's not the latest Linux Mint, it is going to be one of the, um, uh, one of the slightly older ones. Uh, but the VM, uh, the VM, it works, and this system, it does not. 
but everything else does work so we'll go ahead and have a brief look at that so you can toggle this button here and you can show uh, all of the individual CPUs what they are doing the temperature sensors and then you can see the various properties so there's a lot more information that we have on this system here here is our memory and our memory usages let's see what happens if we boot up for example LibreOffice so let's just boot up Libre Writer over there, see if how that impacts the memory. Uh, not really much. <laughs> That's what we get with a computer with a ton of memory, though. All right, the GPU just spiked for a brief second, if you saw that. There you go. Uh, here's your GPU. Uh, and so we can see here's our video memory usage. We have two gigabytes over there. And here's our GPU usage. Again, our sensors and tells us all of our information. Uh, this is the main drive that is being used on this computer. You can see it's the NVMe drive, uh, 256 gigabyte, and you can see that there's data going back and forth. 120 gigabyte, this is the Cubes uh, hard drive that is also in this system as well. Uh, you'll see there's no usage at all because we're not using that drive. We have no Ethernet connection set up to this particular system right now, although we could if we wanted to. And here is our wireless connection. So you can see it does give us a lot more breakdowns of our applications. Uh, we just don't have system resources and processes. The other issue that I'm finding here on the heart real hardware on the Linux Mint 20.3 is, yeah, I can't really see what those settings are. So in theory, I could change something. There you go. I just changed it to Fahrenheit. I don't know how. Oh, a decimal binary. There you go. And so here's your user refresh rate does work. So who knows, maybe those are GTK4 issues. I know Linux Mint has had some issues with GTK4. And um, being as that this has, uh, uh, this has GTK4 as a dependency, it's very possible some of these bugs could be related to that. But I don't really know. I'm not a developer. Uh, but overall, the application is, uh, is pretty nice if it works on your system and that's kind of the caveat it is a little bit big um, it's uh, if you don't have any of the other dependencies it's going to take uh, a number of different um, uh, a number of different processes uh, the other thing that I found is that um, on the older version of Linux Mint before they before we have the, the nicer um, uh, the nicer dude what are you doing would you stop resetting after every damn oh my lord stop resetting after every letter there we are um we don't actually have the flat pack okay this is new i did not have to do this last time i installed this do one letter at a time and clicking the thing Okay, you'll see that we got net dot uh, dot resources with no application. Again, on the virtual machine, I actually have the full icon. I have everything working. So I don't know, maybe the issue is just something regarding the version of the application. I, I really don't know. Uh, but here on real hardware, I am getting a few bugs and a few issues with the system, but let's go ahead and jump on over to the VM now and you'll get a chance to see that it works a little bit better and uh, we'll show you what it looks like in the uh, software installer as well. All right, so here we are over on the VM. I don't think I have HTOP installed on this one. Nope, and we're not gonna bother installing it right now. Let's go ahead and have a look at our system monitor. So here is the Linux Mint system monitor on the newer versions of Linux Mint, you'll see it's effectively the same. And we'll just go ahead and put that over there. And we'll have a look at our resources over here. So here is our resources tab. So you can see here on the VM, we actually do get um, all of our processes and applications. So I did check the Linux Mint version while it was booting up. This is a 21.2. So the other laptop was a 20.3. So I don't know if it's that or the processor that uh, makes the difference. And let's go ahead and have a brief look at our system info here. So right here, you'll see this is a Ryzen 5 1600. We've given it four cores. 
and we've given it six gigs of memory and so that's what uh, it looks like here so uh, over here you can see our applications that are running so these are all the things that are currently running on the system and the various processes and over here we have our single line CPU you can show the logical CPUs usually the first time you toggle this you have to uh, provide some admin credentials so we've already done that before so it looks like once you've done that once then uh, you don't have to uh, keep doing it again but you can see how each processor is moving now the issue we have over here is we don't see the max frequencies the virtualization the temperature presumably this is because we are in a virtual box uh, this is where I think we need to authenticate. So let's go ahead and enter our super secret password. And you can see here more information when you're not on a VM on this one here. We were getting a little bit more information on the other one. And again, GPUs type stuff. We get nothing. And we do, again, get a listing of every single drive on the system. Here's our Ethernet connection. And the drive that we have. And this is the... CD DVD drive that we have on the virtual machine so overall the application is working as intended over here you can see that these guys now work so there's something about that older version of Linux Mint or the AMD processor uh, or uh, maybe some conflict with GTK 4 that is causing a few issues with uh, this application over in the uh, main hardware where we're not getting that same thing over here on the VM so let's have a look at our software manager as well and once our software manager install uh, boots up you see it says it's over here it's using system memory there all right let's go with resources and you can see over here now uh, with the new uh, software manager inside the newer versions of Linux Mint, you'll see we actually do have our nice icon up here. Everything does look a little bit better. And you can see that uh, the size here is 12 megabytes. Uh, it is the same application you'll see there. Uh, so there are a few little issues that we have depending on uh, some unknown factors. Is it the version of uh, cinnamon is it the version of GTK or is it something else related to a newer processor uh, something in here is still causing a few issues but if you do like to see the charts and you do like to have a little bit more information this is a tool that will work for you assuming that it works for your particular setup uh, obviously with a newer application like this uh, letting the developer know about uh, any issues will certainly help to resolve it. In my case, works on a VM on Linux Mint uh, 21. Dot, what did I say this was? 21.2, I think. 21.1 or 21.2, and it does not work on 20.3. <laughs> so, um, and with the differences, this is an older AMD processor in virtualization. The other one is a newer AMD processor on real hardware. But that is the application. If you are interested, it is available as a flat pack, and it is also available on, on the AUR for those that are using Arch. So you can go ahead and have a look at that if that interests you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.